Hello and welcome back to CHY for You History of the West and the World. Uh, this course is at Discovery Academy. My name is Arseny Kirchhoff. Uh, today we're going to begin a lesson on uh, Renaissance and its importance in history. So let's begin. So, what does Renaissance mean? Well, Renaissance is traditionally taken to come from a, an old Italian word, Rinascimento, uh, which roughly translated means the rebirth, or the, yeah, the rebirth. Um, and what is usually meant by uh, Renaissance is a period of history lasting from around 15th, or very early 15th century, um, and uh, going to about 16th, 17th century, depending on who you ask. Uh, and the reason Renaissance is important in history of Europe and the world is because it represents a transition from a society dominated by religion, uh, superstition, uh, towards a society that is dominated by values of humanism, secularism, and scientific enlightenment. And humanism is a philosophy which places, sorry, just go back, uh, and uh, humanism is a philosophy that is dominated, uh, whose idea is that human existence, what it means to be human, is placed at the center, uh, at the center of uh, human activities. So in other words, enjoying being human and discovering what it means to be human is more important than, let's say, praying or trying to get into heaven. Not to say that there isn't a role for religion, just that the focus is more on humanity rather than the divine. Now, secularism goes hand in hand with humanism as it is a, uh, a kind of a, an ideology or belief that uh, religion should play little to no part in politics and the way that the society is organized. Again, not to say that religion doesn't matter anymore. Obviously, it did very much so, as we will see. But it does mean that uh, people gradually move towards the idea that uh, religion, the church, should not play a role in politics. And it's a pretty big uh, change from the past. Uh, Renaissance is also categorized by the rediscovery of the past, specifically of ancient Greek and ancient Roman philosophers, poets, artists, uh, and sculptors, uh, as well as discoveries of new inventions, particularly by Arab and Indian uh, scientists, scholars, poets, philosophers, as well as genuinely new inventions uh, invented in, in the West. So why did Renaissance occur? Okay, why, why did European society experience such a, uh, such a profound change, even if it was a gradual change? Well, there are a number of reasons for that. One of the more important ones, and one of the most immediate ones is the Black Death, which we discussed in the last lesson. Now, this terrible plague wiped out a huge chunk of population uh, throughout the world, but it especially uh, hit Europe particularly hard. And as Black Death depopulated parts of Europe, people first turned to religion, obviously they turned to superstition, such as magic, spells, and potions, uh, but obviously not a lot of things helped. Uh, and as this terrible plague continued, people began uh, to live for the moment, okay, and life became seen as important and short, so there's a philosophical change that we should live while there is still time. Uh, the other reason for why Renaissance occurred is because when the Black Death hit, more than 90% of the people lived in the countryside. They were peasants. They were farmers. And 
as the Black Death hit, and it is accompanied by famine, so there's uh, not a lot of food available as well, people begin to flock to towns and cities, and towns and cities begin to grow, which means that there's more population that has money, more population that, bigger population that is literate, able to read and write to some extent, uh, and that's going to play a big part uh, in uh, in the beginning of Renaissance. Another major reason uh, were the Crusades, which we also discussed before. And the Crusades, which are usually seen in a very negative light, because they were wars of religion, uh, and were punctuated by a lot of violence and brutality, nonetheless, there was a positive aspect to them as well, because the Europeans uh, and, uh, and the Muslim world, they weren't just fighting, they were also trading, they were uh, also exchanging ideas. And the people who went on crusade, or even Europeans who were born already in the Middle East, children of the Crusaders, when they came back to Europe, they brought with them a lot of the knowledge, fashion, technologies, ideas from the Middle East. So they brought back algebra, uh, very primitive uh, chemistry in the form of alchemy. Uh, they brought back uh, lenses, for example, uh, new ways of uh, building ships and sails. And even more importantly, they brought back writings of ancient Greek and ancient Roman philosophers, which were lost in Europe, but still existed in the Middle East. And they were translated into Arabic from Greek and Roman, from Greek and Latin, sorry. And then from Arabic, they were translated once again into European languages. And those new technologies, new ideas, as well as ancient knowledge brought back to Europe, it gets people curious. Okay, People begin to read more, they begin to question the universe and their place in them. And that is, and uh, art and poetry and literature and philosophy begin to flourish as a result. Another reason was trade and very, very early beginnings of capitalism. As Europeans begin to interact more and more with the world around them, with North Africa, with the Middle East, with Eastern Europe, and even faraway lands such as India and China, they make more money. And people who have money, the new merchant class, they're more and more interested in uh, incentives. So they want to spend money, they want to enjoy uh, enjoy their life, which means that they will spend more of that money on arts. We'll talk about Renaissance art in a bit. That means also that technologies begin to flourish because these merchants, they want to be able to travel further and further, uh, which means newer ships, which means they need better technology. There are more voyages. And as the merchants who trade with uh, places outside of Europe become more and more wealthy and be there's more and more of them, that means that the cities also begin to grow faster and faster. And what we start to see is the emergence of, perhaps for the first time in Europe, of a kind of a middle class. So there are wealthy merchants who derive their wealth not from the land and the peasants and the taxes, but they get the wealth from trade. Another reason for why Renaissance occurs is because there are also new inventions within Europe itself, and we looked at them in the previous lesson. So, better water wheel, better glass blowing techniques, better metal working, better sails, gunpowder. Okay. All of those technologies, they serve as a kind of a as a kind of a ball rolling down the hill, and it's just gathering more and more speed. And finally, going back to the new ideas and old ideas brought back from the Middle East, there's more and more fascination with ancient cultures, particularly ancient Roman and ancient Greek cultures, 
ancient art, history, and philosophy. And ironically, the Catholic Church plays a very big part in fostering this new fascination. And if you go to Vatican today, you will see, you'll find the world's most fabulous collection of ancient Greek and ancient Roman art, architecture, sculpture, uh, and so on. So this is why, in very broadly, why Renaissance has occurred. And in the next lesson, we will talk about uh, different aspects of Renaissance.